Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to the MMA Breakdown, and this is my recap for UFC Fight Night 43, Tahuna vs. Marquardt. Um, I was 5 for 8 uh, for the picks I made for this card. I did not pick, uh, I did not make a pick for the Hooker and Whistle fight, or the Matthews Johnson fight, and the fights I picked incorrectly were uh, Grujic Indic, um, Vasilik Songcha An, and the main event uh, Marquardt and Tahuna. But let's recap the event and I'll give you my thoughts on all the fights, um, everything that happened. Uh, I didn't have, I, I thought this was going to be a pretty bad card, wasn't excited for much. Um, and uh, there turned out to be some fun fights, but uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't that much better than I was expecting. Um, just not a lot of really meaningful fights here, and um, a couple of uh, pretty pretty boring decisions. But let's get into the recap. Starting off on the preliminary card, light heavyweight John Volante got a split decision over Sean O'Connell. Um, I thought this was a bit of a robbery. I scored it for O'Connell. Um, rounds one and two, I believe, I gave to O'Connell, who was just more aggressive, uh, coming forward a lot more. John Volante was uh, doing a decent job countering. He was able to land some good shots. I uh, was throwing that high kick a lot. But um, oh, there's a lot, in, a lot of clinch work also. I thought O'Connell spent more time uh, pressing Volante up against the fence. I gave the fight to O'Connell. Um, but really, I think uh, the book's kind of written on Volante. Um, I don't think he's really UFC caliber. Uh, you know, didn't look too good against another low-level fighter, but... Um, you know, decent fight for Sean O'Connell. I don't, I don't, uh, for both guys, I don't expect uh, much from either of them, though. Next up, a featherweight, uh, Dan Hooker TKO'd Ian Entwistle in the first round. Um, I had heard about Entwistle's leg lock style uh, coming into the fight. I was kind of intrigued by that. He came out super aggressive, um, pushed the action right away. Um, Dove on a leg, seemed to come close to a heel hook, uh, but Dan Hooker started dropping some elbows, and Ant Whistle would not let go of it. Uh, Hooker continued to drop elbows, and then I thought Ant Whistle at that point looked pretty bad. Um, never really abandoned the heel hook until he was seriously hurt, and Hooker continued to rain down elbows and ended the fight. Um, not a great strategy from Matt Whistle. I mean, once you're bloodied up and once you're uh, in danger of being finished, it's time to let go of the submission. And, you know, it's it's cool and all. It's intriguing uh, to go for those leg locks and have that be your main weapon. It's fun to watch, but um, not, a, not a great strategy for winning fights. And... Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to rely on that if he wants to be successful in the UFC. But Hooker gets the win. Um, you know, we, we I don't think we really learned too much about his game. I mean, he did well to not get submitted. But um, I, I need to see him again to really get a feel for where he is. And why not match him up with Nicholas Backstrom, uh, another featherweight who just debuted on the Berlin Fight Pass card. Um, you know, with all these five pass cards and uh, bringing in new talent from these other countries, why not mix and match these guys? I think that would be a, a fun matchup, uh, Hooker and Backstrom. And next up, a welterweight, Neil Magny, with a great performance, knocking out Rodrigo de Lima in the second round. Uh, Magny, uh, great, great uh, performance for him. He's really hitting his stride, um, coming off of the Ultimate Fighter. 
he won uh, the fight against John Manley, then had a few setbacks, but he's on a three-fight win streak now. He's really turned things around, um, showing great improvement between fights, and I expect him to continue to improve, and um, now I have high expectations for him. And the knock on him was that he couldn't finish, guys, and after getting badly dominated in the first round, um, Rodrigo de Lima was able to get mount and uh, hold hold it for the whole round. Um, and then he locked up a, a really nice uh, triangle at the end, um, held on to it even though Magni uh, picked him up, stood up. Um, if that if that uh, if the round wasn't if it, the round wasn't coming to an end right there, I think uh, Rodrigo de Lima would have finished him. But Magni got badly dominated in that first round, close to a 10-8. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's a 10-8 because uh, you know he didn't do too much uh he didn't uh, mount too much offense while he was um in mount but to come back in that second round totally turn things around um got right to work with his striking he was doubling up with the jab and uh that using that uh signature rangy striking he's shown in his last few fights and then to get the knockout uh he didn't finish anyone in the tough house or in his UFC career. That's a big win for Neil Magny. I was really impressed. And Rodrigo de Lima, um, you know, for a day for making his debut, he didn't look uh, bad either. Uh, really dominant in that first round. Seems like a good grappler, but um, big win for Magny. And uh, really looking forward to what he can do next. On to the next fight, welterweight uh, battle of um, tough nations veterans. Vic Grujic uh, TKO'd Chris Indich the end of the first round. Um, great performance for Grujic. Uh, he was able to hurt Indich on the feet. I think he was going for a takedown and uh, giving it up. It came back up in the clinch and he was able to land some shots. Um, broke the clinch, landed a big combination. Um, Hurt in ditch was able to take him down and then uh, took his back and um, TK. I think he was working for the rear naked choke and then he uh, TKO'd him. But um, he looked good here. It was a fun fight. Uh, first round finish. Pretty old at 37. Um, I didn't see. I didn't see any of uh, Grujic's fights in the house. Um, Indic, I think this is the end for him. He lost to Laprice in the house. Um, lost pretty badly to Richard Walsh in his debut. Um, but nice win for Grujic. Um, you know, I think obviously, I think the the talent level uh, from Tough Nations was pretty low. But this was a fun fight, a nice stoppage win for him. And I think he should fight Richard Walsh, who. Um, I think he competed at middleweight in the house, but uh, dropped down to welterweight. Um, he beat Indich last, and I think that would be a logical next opponent for Grujic. Um, two guys from uh, the same tough season. But um, it was a fun fight. Next up at flyweight, this was uh, one of the worst fights on the card. Um, pretty boring. I thought Richie Vasilik got the unanimous decision over Roldan Sankchaan. Um, Sankchaan just couldn't deal with uh, Vasilik's grappling. He was the better wrestler, um, able to hold him down. On the feet, Sankchaan was, uh, was throwing some of his uh, unorthodox kicks, but... Um, I think he landed uh, like a push sidekick to the face. Um, other than that, it was really just Vasilik's wrestling. Um, I don't expect uh, much from Vasilik, though, going forward. I don't think this win over a, a, n a newcomer who didn't seem to be that capable, I don't think this really proves anything for him. Um, he didn't do well on the on tough smashes, um, lost both of his fights. He got finished by Colin Fletcher. He did compete at lightweight though, um, dropping down to flyweight. Uh, got finished easily by Justin Scoggins. Um, I believe he's close to 40 as well. Um, not certain about that, but uh, I, I don't. Ex my point is that I don't expect uh, much from him. 
even in the flyweight division going forward. And Roldis Sangchan, um, I don't expect too much from him either uh, if he you know couldn't even compete with Vasilik. And next up, last fight on the Fight Pass uh, prelim card, lightweight Jake Matthews with a really dominant uh, performance over Deshaun Johnson. Uh, he looked uh, really good. Um, submitted him in the third round with a triangle choke. A uh, huge guy for lightweight. Um, huge muscular. I think that size is really going to help him going forward. But um, he was just able to out-wrestle Deshaun Johnson. Um, did way better than him in the clinch. Um, on the ground, he was opening up with some real good ground and pound. Uh, Deshaun Johnson just uh, had nothing for him on, off of his back. On the feet, Johnson kept trying to land the big uppercut. Um, couldn't do it. And uh, in that third round, Johnson was able to get on top, and Matthews, Matthews locked up the triangle choke and finished it. Uh, really dominant performance for him, and this guy was also a vet of tough, na uh, tough nations. He lost in the first round. I can't remember uh, to who. Um, I didn't watch that fight, but uh, he looked good here. And obviously, this is um, you know a very low level of the UFC, but um, I think that size is going to help him. And uh, I'm interested to see if he can have the same kind of dominant performance and really imposes wrestling on some better guys, but um, really dominant performance for Matthews. And Deshaun Johnson, um, you know, he got beat pretty badly. I don't I expect much from him after that performance. We'll just have to see how he does in his next fight. And on to the main card at welterweight, Robert Whitaker got a unanimous decision over Mike Rhodes. Um, I expected Whitaker to be a lot more dangerous and dominant in this fight. Um... I did give him, I think, I believe I gave him the first and the third. Clearly, I thought the second round was a little close, but um, really the whole fight was uh, Whitaker basically just being able to land more shots, um, control range better with his striking. Um, never really hurt Rhodes, so it's kind of disappointing. I thought Whitaker, you know, was more talented than that. Um, Rhodes was uh, landing some good counter strikes, uh, showed kind of average boxing himself. But it was a pretty uneventful fight for the most part. Whitaker did take him down in the third round, which was nice to see because he hasn't shown any wrestling or ground game um, in his uh, in the tough house or in his UFC career. I think the only time he was on the ground at all was against um, Brad Scott, and I think he was just defending a takedown there. But... Um, Whitaker got a win that he really needed. He was on a two-fight losing streak. I've been really high on this guy since he won the show, and he had that great, um, he had that great finish over Colton Smith, and since then hasn't been able to, you know, replicate that same kind of performance. Um, I picked him to finish Rhodes. He couldn't do it, and um, he's still a really young guy. Um, haven't completely lost hope for him, but. Uh, he's he's developing and moving forward a lot slower than I thought he would be, but um, he got the win, and you know, that's the most important thing. But I think uh, I've lost a lot of um, expectations for him. Uh, they're not as nearly as high as they were a couple fights ago. And next fight, this was uh, the best fight on the card for me. Um, Oliveira submitted Hatsu Hiyoki in the second round. Uh, superb performance uh, and great win for Oliveira. Um, it was a little, rock, little rocky for him um, early on. Hiyoki was able to take his back at one point. Um, I think he got on top as well a few times, but um, it was a back-and-forth grappling match. Oliveira uh, just had the better submission game. He was able to attack with more submissions. Um, he attacked with the same submission that he finished Hioki with uh, several times um, before the finishing move. Hioki pulled uh, Trigo for a flying triangle real early on. That was great to see. It was a really fun back and forth grappling match. Um, and I was very impressed that Oliveira was able to get that submission after being poked in the eye. It seemed that he was hurt pretty badly. But um, 
came back even stronger and uh, cinched up that uh, signature kind of a guillotine choke but with an anaconda grip and then he falls back and pulls guard um i love seeing uh you know cool kind of different uh different variations with the front headlock and different kind of uh uh crafty chokes like that uh very similar to the uh choke he used to finish jonathan brookens except this time he threw the leg over the sh one of his legs over the shoulder of Hioki, kind of like uh, for a Peruvian ne necktie. But um, it was a great choke and a great finish over a, a really strong grappler like Hioki, who hasn't been finished in the UFC. You know, he's had some disappointing losses to guys like Darren Elkins, um, Guida. Um, so you know, Oliveira is not the first guy to beat Hioki, but. To finish him like that, I thought was very impressive. Um, he's a submission wizard, and I'm really high on him. I've always been high on him. Um, he's one of these guys who came into the UFC super young. Um, he's been here for a few years now, and I kind of view him as like the Rory McDonald of the featherweight division, or a young guy who's got a lot of hype, one of these new breed kind of guys, but um, really high on Oliveira and. He deserves a top 10 opponent next. He called out uh, Nick Lentz for the rematch. I think that's fine. You know, Nick Lentz has put together um, some good wins at featherweight. I think that would be a good matchup, but uh, fantastic. Um, great performance for, uh, for Oliveira here. And Hioki, I said in my predictions, I don't think he's been the same guy uh, since really the Lamas fight, um, which I thought he won. But after that, uh, when he... Who did he lose to after the Lamas fight? Dropped the fight to Guida and Elkins. Those two fights in a row. Um, I thought Elkins he should have been able to beat um, both of those guys, really. Guida also, but um, he just hasn't looked as dominant as he did against uh, George Roop. And then his best performance, uh, that was over Palaszewski. Um, and even against Lamas, like I said, I thought he won, and that's a really high level opponent. I don't think he looked the same against uh you know Guida Elkins and uh even Menhavar in his last fight, but um you know prove that he can still be a tough test for really talented guys like Oliveira, but um you know I, I don't think I think his days as a contender are over. Next up at heavyweight, Jared Rosholt got the unanimous decision over so the Hulk Pulele. Um, fantastic performance for Rocholt. Um, it was really great. Everyone was thinking that Pulele was going to um, just run over him and knock him out. Uh, thought that um, Rocholt wouldn't be able to strike with him and that Pulele would just mount him like everyone else and knock him out. But Rocholt, uh, that wrestling... Uh, Pulele couldn't deal with it. Rocholt had the better cardio, and he hurt Pulele a few times on the feet. He landed some good uppercuts, um, and he had never done that in his previous fights against Omi Lanchek or against uh, Walt Harris. Um, even got dropped by Walt Harris. Um, Pulele's only real moment of success was at the end of that first round. He was able to uh, reverse position. There were only about, uh, I think, 10 seconds left in the round. And he uh, started with his uh, classic, his signature ground and pound. Um, Rocholt was able to survive it though, and then uh, just went back to the wrestling. He was really able to take down Pulele. Um, just proved he was a better grappler than Pulele. Pulele also, actually, right at the beginning of the fight, he got a few takedowns um, that were pretty impressive. But uh, Rocholt was just the better wrestler as the fight went on, and um, even proved to. Uh, have the more effective striking um, and if, on a few occasions when he did her Pulele he started to uh, uh, really work that ground and pound it didn't look like too much but um, he, he was all over Pulele I thought it was really impressive and you know obviously these guys are never gonna you know be contenders but um, I think that's a serious win for Rochold and I think he deserves a step up um, maybe a guy like uh, Gonzaga or someone like that I think would be a good test for him but um, that, that was a really surprising performance I thought.
and Pulele, um, you know, he ran into a hard-nosed wrestler. He looks great when he's uh, mounting and ground and pounding guys like Barry and Ruin Potts. Um, but I think we've kind of seen how far he can go. But, I mean, it's the heavyweight division. It's it's kind of novel. And, um, you know, he's still good for some fun matchups. You know, I think you could even put him in there with a guy like Bigfoot Silva. I think, you know, it probably doesn't make sense. But I think that's a fun matchup. He, he, you know, I still want to see him uh, fight again. Um I think he's good for some fun fights like that. And then the main event, uh, Nate Marquardt with a great win um, and great armbar f uh, finish over James Tahuna in the first round. Um, I picked Tahuna uh, to win this fight, and Marquardt just ran over him. It was uh, looked like a completely different fighter than he did at welterweight. Um, at welterweight, he was trying to strike with guys, and in this fight uh, went right to his wrestling and his grappling early on. It was really great to see. Dominated Tahuna. Um, and he was able to get that arm bar uh, late in the first round. But um, really dominant win for Marquardt. Tahuna really had nothing here. Um, I think he was able to get back to his feet after the first time Marquardt took him down. Um, can't remember too much uh, what happened. If there were any ex exchanges on the feet. But... Uh, Marquardt uh, got him down again and uh, was able to get that arm bar from a pretty cool uh, position. Um, kind of, uh, he got it from, I think it was on the back and uh, was able to kind of uh, roll him over. Um, <laughs> I'm not uh, describing that well, but it was a really cool uh, finish, a cool submission. I think Marquardt really kept his uh, UFC career alive with this fight, you know, I'm not convinced that he can do this against any of the top 10 guys at middleweight. Um, and James Tahuna, obviously, he's been on a losing streak, been finished in his last couple of fights. This wasn't a real tough test for Marquardt, but uh, he did win in a very dominant fashion. And I think he can uh, provide a really strong test for some of the lower end top 10 guys at middleweight. Um, Marquardt versus Dalloway, I think that's a fine matchup. Marquardt and uh, Philippou, I think that's also a really fun fight and a good test for both guys. Um, you know, fights like that, so I think Marquardt really gave himself some new life uh, moving back to middleweight. I obviously think his chin is still compromised from the knockouts he suffered at welterweight, but... Um, he fought a lot differently, I think, at welterweight. That he was just trying to stand with guys who were just too small and speedy for him. They were able to get right on the inside and knock him out. Um, welterweight, I mean middleweight, I think is, you know, obviously where he belongs. That's where he was successful before. I don't think he really should have ever dropped down to welterweight. Um, aside from the great win he had over Tyron Woodley. Um, just got uh, dominated pretty badly in all of his other fights, but uh, really liked seeing uh, Marquardt kind of return to old form here. Um, always a really talented guy who never made it over that hump. You know, lost the fights to Sonnen and Okami, but um, kept his uh, UFC career alive and uh, renewed interest in him. And uh, I'm excited to see Marquardt again. I really hope he gets one of those uh, lower end top 10 guys. So that's my recap for UFC Fight Night 43, Tahuna versus Marquardt. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Um, check out my recap for UFC Fight Night San Antonio, Swanson versus Stevens. And check out my picks for UFC 175, Weidman versus Machida. And I'll also have my picks for the Ultimate Fighter uh, 19 finale. Um, that uh, card in UFC 175 taking place, both taking place next weekend, one on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, of course, I'll um, have recaps for both of those. And I'll um, be back the week after that with, um, I believe it's uh, the, let's see here, uh, the Cerrone Miller uh, fight night. I'll be back with that. So. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please like the video, comment, subscribe. 
Uh, take care and I'll see you later. Bye.